everybody. Um, today, I'm calling this to fix it. I will be doing some soldering. I'll be putting the capacitor back on this bad boy. This is a 58 inch motherboard, uh, high sense 58 inch motherboard. So if you're having any kind of issues where the TV cuts on, cut back off, cut on, cut back off, nine times out of 10 is because you have a bad capacitor. What is a capacitor? This, these little guys. If you see, there are two right here and there used to be two at the top. Um, now, when you take, if, you, if you're not afraid, if you take the back of the TV off and you actually examine your board, everything should be flat. This is a good capacitor, it's flat, like that. But sometimes you'll take it off and you'll see like a little small bulge. If you see any kind of bulging, that means that the capacitor is out, is done for. These typically don't go out like that. These are like a lifetime type of thing. However, these little guys, they will go out on you in a heartbeat. Um, get on Amazon, order you a few. Um, especially if this is your first time trying to do anything like this, order you a few so you have a chance to mess up and do it over again, all right? Um, what we need before you get started to put your pieces back on the board, first of all, let me say something clear. Make sure that when you are removing the old pieces that you use your soldering gun, okay? Don't try to remove the pieces trying to be Mr. Strong Guy. And I'm only saying that because if you don't know nothing about this and this is your first time doing it, you are just going to go with it like a caveman and just start pulling stuff off. And that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to get your little heat gun like this guy right here. Spend about $20 for this. Plugs into the wall. They send you a kit that has different pieces. And all these pieces are very important, um, especially... If you did the dumb thing like I did and just try to go willy nilly pulling stuff off the freaking motherboard, don't do that. But um, if you can't change the past, this is the, the tool you want to use, okay? This right here is going to save you a lot. You basically just take that, heat it up once it's actually on the little and on the gun, and you're basically sliding those pieces off in the back. If you see in the back, they're ridges like this. They're real pointy. Let me see if you can see that. There we go. You see how these are pointy right here? That right there is basically how it got soldered on, okay? This is how it got soldered on. So you basically stick the little needles through these guys. Of course, you're going to trim it down. You're not going to stick this whole thing through. But you stick this through the perspective spots that you want, the respective spots. That you want. So in this case, these capacitors are going right here. I'm, I'm only doing this so you guys can see. I'm going to trim these down. So for all the professionals out there that see me doing this, and go, Ooh, why are you doing this and why are you doing that? I'm only doing this because this is a how-to for dummies. This is not meant. For the professionals out there. Professionals out there shouldn't even have to look at a YouTube video. This is for people that just want to say some scratch or want a project, a home project. You see how that slides in there nice and smooth? Okay. The reason why I'm showing this is because, like I say, if you go with a gung-ho, you're going to go and you're not going to have a smooth hole like that. If you have an issue like that, all you got to do is just heat up the gun, find the holes that you're trying to actually poke it through. And remember, don't poke from this side. <laughs> you want to come from this side. This is the side you want to start on. So all I did is just basically take this gun and go right inside that hole. Um, what I like to do, and that's only just because I've worked with hot metal before. I've never done solder, but I have done, um, I haven't done solder before, but I have done like the, uh, you know, when you're bending, bending the, the iron, um, when I had to repair some stairs, uh, but that's with a blowtorch. So it's the same kind of science, but a different tool. Uh, with that, I just used a blowtorch, had a little piece of, uh, wire, same way this is, this is solder. And I just melted down. When you're doing that, you have a mask on, you got a blowtorch. It's a totally different process. But it's the same science behind it. You're putting metal pieces inside and you're trying to get them to stick. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What we want to do is we want to trim this down to a decent size. Get you some wire cutters. Don't be stupid trying to do both at, at one time. Get you some wire cutters, do one at a time. And the thing is, you want to get that um, that piece real close. See how it is? You want to try to get it real close, but you want to make sure that it's not sticking out looking crazy. So the furthest you want your pieces to stick out, and you can see that right there, about there. So you want everything to be about flush with that. You see how far out? And that's about a centimeter or something like that. So with that being said, you see that this is plenty. I got plenty of juice right here. There's a reason why I'm putting it in like that, okay? We'll get to that in a minute. Let me get this up. And then have your piece in, you see. And like I say, you want to make sure it's nice and flush. I know y'all can see those sticks sticking out right now. Okay. So you want to get put it in there and make sure you see where the size is at. Now that I see where... Where the cutting size is at, I can just take this little piece right here. Just be very careful because you don't want to scrape up your board. Clip. Clip. And like I tell a lot of folks, you know, when you're doing this type of stuff, just take your time. Um, you, you, you know, when you're doing it for yourself and you're just at home minding your business, you don't have to have a certain process. You don't have to have a certain speed. You are doing this on your own um 
So you don't have to go by the same rules. Uh, I do want to make certain suggestions. Make sure you have a way for, if you don't have an actual mount or an actual uh, stand for this, make sure you just have something to hold it up because you're going to need to be able to hold this piece or at least hold this in place while you're soldering one side. Um, another thing I didn't show y'all before with this little kit gives you the pieces like I showed you. Solder, your wire. Gives you a holder. And the most important thing is your flux. This right here is gonna make your job a lot cleaner and smoother. If you can see how dark it is right here, that's because when I was actually trying to remove the other pieces, I had to actually use this flux um, just to get those pieces off. Cause like I say, I went at it the wrong way. And by going it the wrong way, I had to find a way to try to fix it. Um, but this right here is basically uh, just a way, it's like a, it's like a base that keeps it neat. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean by keeps it neat. Once you get that solder on there, it can just go all over the place and you'll end up creating a bridge, which you don't want to do. You want your solder to be in the spot that you put it at. Okay, so let me get this set up and I will be right back. All right, now that you got your pieces in, the next thing you want to do is actually start your soldering. So this gel is your best friend. This gel right here, don't be like me and use so much because like I say, this is my first time doing this. Uh, so it's kind of like trial and error. Um, however, this uh, flux actually helps to kind of keep the metal pieces together. Not metal pieces, but the metal, uh, this style. Solder, it keeps it together. So what you wanna do, heat your solder first, get your pieces on here, let's get a little bit on there, then go out here and drop it down. The thing about the, um, the flux, what the flux is gonna do is make it go right around there and make a circle for you. And I'm gonna show you guys in just a second. It's gonna look like, I'm gonna show y'all the ugly one and I'm gonna show y'all the not so ugly one. And like I said, this is my first time really doing this 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 way. Um, so don't be afraid. That's why I say you want to get a lot of different pieces. That way, if you do make a mistake, you can just start over. And order you a dummy board, board motherboard, um, if you can. Okay. Now we got that on there. I'll show you what it looks like. It's in place. Everything is in place. It looks ugly from this part. But let's show you up close and personal you see the ugly side and you see the halfway decent side i'm showing this so you guys have full disclosure as far as how these things can come out and if it still works or not that way if you make a mistake you know what to avoid what not to avoid i'm an honest person i like to do honest work um and we're gonna see how this thing turns out because it's definitely all together <laughs> So let's get it hooked up and see if we got something. So we got it cleaned off. We got our compact passengers, uh added back in there. As you see, those are the new pieces. They're in there real good. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to attach everything. And uh, we're going to see if we are good at this or if we should just stop. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Now we have everything buttoned up. This is our moment of truth. And um, I guess the moment of truth is among us. <laughs> we good to go, folks. And that, my friend, is how you install a freaking capacitor. I can see. Call me Mr. Fix-It, a handyman you can trust.